Brak the Yahoo, Brak the Yahushai, Brak the Yahoo, Brak the Yahushai, Brak the Yahoo, Brak the Yahoo, Bashim Yahushai, Bahashim, Rakako Dash, the blindness of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, which you well. Salutations to the hopeful elect out there, man. You Akim does a document that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. I'm the pre Shaman, and this lesson is going to be entitled He was a black man named Yahushai. That he. All right, being the one who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. I'm going to go through a few scriptures. I don't have them lined up, but I could just, you know, pull them up by quotes going into the fact that our Lord was a so-called black man. And yes, color does matter and his name does matter. And uh, without further ado, let's go into it. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Yahweh Shai. Now, I say Yahweh Shai in the Hebrew, right? Now, why do I say that? Because our Lord spoke Hebrew. I'm going to deviate real quick. I'm going to go to a precept. I'm going to go back to Revelations. Let me see. Hebrew tongue spot. Let me see if it's there. I don't know how they spell tongue kind of funny. Uh, shit. How do they spell tongue? I think they spell it like that. Hebrew... Oh, matter of fact, kick, prick. Let's try that. There we go. This is the book of Acts, chapter 26, verse 14. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, <clears throat> so you can see um, when it's in red letters that's our Lord speaking and this is the Lord speaking to the Apostle Paul saying Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks so the reason I'm saying that I brought this point out we know that his name was in Hebrew the Lord was in fact a Hebrew Israelite he wasn't a Greek you gotta remember the letter J is only about 500 years old alright Prior to that, if you have the 1611 King James Bible, they have Eusus, Christos, right? Which, that's that's just um, a mistransliteration of the word anointed savior. All right? So, which, um, the name does matter. All right? Because names carry a vibration. When you go into Hebrew, the word for God is Allah. But we don't say Allah because that invokes the spirits of the Muslims right now. Right? So there's certain vibrations carried by 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 name. Well, the word the word Baal means Lord. Are you gonna call the Lord Baal? No, because there's a vibration associated with the Canaanite deities and Satan. So there's a particular vibration when you say the word Jesus Christ. You think of a white man with long hair. So when you come back to the truth, we say his proper and true name, which is Yahweh Shai. One more scripture before we go back to the book of Revelations. And yes, I'm bigging up the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son. Primarily right now, His Son. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 30, verse 4. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fist? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? All this is Yahweh and, uh, and His Son, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh created the only spirit, the only begotten spirit, Yahweh Shai, and, and so uh, fulfilling the orders of his father created and, do, and able to do all these things. That's why it says, What is his name? His name is Yahweh. And what's his son's name? Yahweh Shai, if thou canst tell. And we could tell, man, the right is no longer being hid. The spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai has jumped on certain men, all right? To push out that vibration to his elect. I'll tell you what, man. Prior to this thing, um, when I always thought that the Lord was white, you know, I didn't esteem being dark skinned, man. All right. But now that I know that my Lord and Savior is um, a dark skinned black man, as we're going to prove, I love my skin complexion, man. I embrace it, man. I wish I was even darker. So I say that to say this. It plays a psychological effect on our, on our people. You get, you have a sense of 
um, inferiority if you think that, you know, the only begotten spirit of the Heavenly Father looked like what the world have him look like, what the Catholic Church has him look like, you know? But thankfully, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh, I was snapped out of that and I was born again, and that demon left my mind, man. All right? This is the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Yahweh Shai. Now we could say, um, now we don't. Now we don't have to say verbatim, since I brought out those precepts, which the Most High gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must surely come to pass. Now, <clears throat> the word revelation, you have to break it down. Re means back. The veil, the velation part means back the veil. So let's pull back the veil. Let's pull back the covering of our Lord Yahweh Shine. That's what we're doing in these latter times. We're gonna break it down through the scriptures. What he was, what type of man he was, what he looked like. All right, and hopefully after this lesson, whoever comes across it was edified, primarily the elect. And to those that gainsay, this could be lesson could be to your condemnation. Most how works and how he wants to work. It says things which must surely come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. All right, so John was on the island of Patmos when he received particular revelation. And let's jump down to the 14th verse, the 13th verse rather. And we're going to read to the 15th verse. It says, in the midst of the seven candlesticks. Now, when you read down to the last two verses, it tells you that the seven candlesticks represent the seven churches of Asia Minor. One like unto the son of man, Banadama, son of the ground. Because Yahweh Shai who the word alienly called Jesus Christ is referred, is referred to as sec, the second Adam in the book of Corinthians. So it's talking about him. How was shy? It says, cloud clothed with a garment down to the foot. In the ancient times, men would wear garments that were down to their feet. You know, that's how come if you see the Hebrew Israelites out there teaching, you know, and this is for those that just might just click this show and not really know what it's about. That's why we wear the garments we wear down to our foot because this is how the Lord was dressed. This is how this was our custom. See, Eastern custom, all right, because the Bible is an Eastern book. It's the whole tradition. I know over here in the West, you know, shit get played out. Like, you know, people don't dress in the 70s how they did it in the 80s or how they did it in the 90s and so on and so forth. But in the Eastern custom and the customs of the Bible, to whole whole tradition is esteemed not to change it. So for thousands of years, men wore garments down to the foot. Now it's the style for thousands of years, man. Clothed the garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Now, a girdle is a warlike apparel, right? It's used to pr protect your midsection in war so nobody can stab you in your ribs. And gold represents royalty. So he was the, our Lord and Savior wasn't uh, no squeamish punk. As sometimes they betray him, you know, like he wouldn't hurt a fly. He was warlike. Just like the Father. Now, since I said that, let me jump to this. All right, now this is the book of Exodus chapter 15, verse 3. Just because I said he was a warlike person. Exodus 15 and 3, the Lord, now this is Yahweh, is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Yahweh is his name. All right, so you can see that the Heavenly Father is about war. Now, I believe I can find a scripture that says, my father won. Let me see if I can find something like that. This is John 10 and 30. I and my father are one. Now, does it mean that they're one spirit? No, they're separate spirits, of course, because the Lord's favorite, Yahweh's favorite disciple was Peter. He made him the head, but we know that our Lord's favorite disciple was John. But it says that I and my father are one, right? And we just read that the Lord is a man of war. Now that they're one, are they talking about one spirit? No, this is what it's talking about. First Corinthians chapter one, it should be one verse 10. Um, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So that's what it's talking about. They're in the same mind and same judgment. All right. They're of one body and one mind. 
All right, so if the Lord is a man of war. You best believe his son is going to be the same. Hey, Lil Wayne had that song, Stunting Like My Daddy. So, you know, it's in a, it's in a, it's in a son's best interest to stunt like his daddy. And Yahweh Shai stunts like his daddy, man. He stunts like Yahweh. All right, warlike and in righteous power. And uh, one more precept to prove that, you know, that, 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 um, it's talking about them being an offshoot of each other. It says, He that teaches his son grieveth the enemy, and before his friends he shall rejoice of him. Now, we know that Yahweh Shai was taught everything of, that he knows from his father Yahweh, every single secret except the day that he shall return. Though his father die, yet he is as though he were not dead, for he hath left one behind that is like himself. See that? So your son, the son of the father is not the same, but what? They're like, they're like each other. All right. So again, going back to the fact that he wore a girdle, it shows that he was a, he's a warlike individual, just like his father. It said his head and his hairs were white like wool. Now, that means white in, in color and woolly in texture, as you see from the picture above. This is not a snapshot. I didn't go, you know, nobody went back in time and took a snapshot photo of the Lord. All right. But this is an artist's depiction. You know, this particular picture got him jacked, you know. So, I mean, the Lord could have been jacked. He could have not. But we don't know. But we know that he was a dark skinned black man all right now scholars do say that the, the cross that he was carrying weighed about 300 pounds all right we know that the lord kept that you know the, the, the dietary laws everything perfect all right so it wouldn't surprise me you know if he was no slouch you know i'm pretty sure i'm not saying he's walking around looking like mr olympia but i wouldn't be surprised if our lord was in shape you know what i'm saying back then you know you walked around he was a carpenter you know things like that now it says um his head and his hair is white like wool as white as snow you know so the head of his hair was white now sometimes people say ha ah, see his head is white <laughs> this following verse is going to prove that it's talking about just his hair and not his face because according to the bible when you go to leviticus the 13 chapter to have white reddish skin is leprosy i'm going to prove that after i read this his head and his hair is white like wool as white as snow as if and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now that's that's talking about um the wine, you know? The Lord drank a lot of wine. Let me get this. Matthew's it should be Matthew's oh I think it's Matthews 11 and 20, but uh, let me see if I can find it. All right, let me go ahead and try it then. Pardon me, I didn't put together the scriptures like I normally did, but this is good. This is good. It's Matthews 11 and 20. Should be. Or 11 and 15. Hmm. Okay, well, can't find the scripture, but the scriptures tell you that they call him a drunkard and a wine bibber. Drunkard, let's try drunkard. Let's see if we can find it. Be nice if we can find it. Now I'm kind of determined to find it. Okay, well, you know, well, that's one thing they call the Lord. They call him um, a drunken and a wine bibber, you know. Oh, here we go. Matthew chapter 4. Oh, 
man. So I see if I have my actual Bible, I'll just know off top. But the scriptures, you know, it tells you that they called him a drunkard and a wine bibber. Um, let me see this right here. His eyes shall be red with wine. The book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 49, verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. Now, the teeth being white with milk is the fact that he was going to have this word in him. You know what I'm saying? All right, because the scriptures speak about the sincere milk. The sincere milk is the word. Let's see something real quick. And the what, what happened was he drank a lot of wine because he was going through a lot of stress. All right, dealing with a lot of stress from our people, you know. Now, you know, something kind of bothers you, bothers you. And what's bothering me right now is um, I'm looking for the Matthews 11 and 19, man. Matthews 11 and 19. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, behold, a man gluttonous and a wine bibber and a friend of publicans and a sinner. But wisdom is justified of her children. So, you know, our Lord drank wine, man. All right, our Lord drank wine. Okay, and then that's why I said his eyes was red with wine. All right. Now, let's jump back into the book of Revelations. First chapter, and we left off at the 14th verse. Now we're going to go to the 15th verse. Now they said, aha, is he head, white head. But now here's what the 15th verse says. It says, and his feet like onto fine brass. Now you ask somebody what colors brass to be deceivious, they'll say yellow, some type of gold or some type of shit. But really, when you go into this Greek word there, the word there should be bronze, you know? Even they changed it to put um, some, met some metal like gold, if not more precious. But really, the word there should be bronze. Let me see if they have the root of it. Brass. See, they're trying to change it up because the truth is getting out there. But, all right. Let's say brass. Let's say whatever color you want to say. Let's say that, all right? Let's say brass. It's lucky, pardon me. Let's say brass. It goes on to say, as if they burned in a furnace. See that? If they burned in a furnace. So, you know, you go to a pizza shop and they're cooking, all right? The dough could be white. What color is it after it's been burnt? It's, been, it's going to be a very, very dark brown. All right. So that's the catch 22. The, the fact the catch 22, it says as if they burn in a furnace. That's the catch 22. You take your brass keys, you burn it dark. You take white dough, burn it dark. All right. Burn anything in a furnace, man. It's going to be very, very dark. Pancakes, whatever. And his voice as a sound of many waters. Why is that? Because you try to have a conversation next to the Niagara River. You know, you try to have a conversation next to the, the Niagara River and you can't because the water is very loud. So that's a Lord had a very loud voice. Now, in this society, the so-called white man teach you to take the bass out of your voice, you know, to get a job interview. But really, men should talk from their balls, man. All right. That's when you when you was a little kid, your voice get deep. Why? Because your balls drop, man. All right. That's what being a man is about. All right. So you have to. Talk like you uh, got a pair, you know, as they say in the military, sound off like you got a pair. All right, so our Lord was a manly individual, right, and a very austere man. All right, so we understand that he spoke Hebrew and also mentioned that he would not have white skin because that's leprosy according to the Bible, correct? So let, let me go and find that scripture now. White reddish. Oh, here we go. Uh, this whole chapter is about leprosy. I'm just, I don't just see where to start. Hey, fuck it. Let's start at one. Oh, you know, fuck it. Re uh, Leviticus 13 and 1. Going into leprosy. And the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahushai spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a rising, a scab, a bright spot, and it is 
and it be in his skin of the flesh like the plague of leprosy, then he shall be brought unto Aaron the priest, or unto one of the sons the priest. The priest shall look unto the plague in the skin of the flesh, and when the hair in the plague is turned white, and the plague in the sight be deeper than the skin of his flesh, it is a plague of leprosy. And the priest shall look upon him and pronounce him unclean. If the bright spot be white in the skin of the, his flesh, and in the sight be not deeper, then the skin and the hair thereof be not turned white, then the priest shall shut, shut up him that hath the plague seven days. And the priest shall look on him the seventh day, and behold, if the plague be, be in his, if the plague in his sight be at a stay, and the and the plague spread not in the skin, then the priest shall shut him up seven days more. So we're going into the particular actions to do with one that has leprosy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna jump down to the thirteenth verse. So we know that we're talking about less leprosy. It says, Then the priest shall consider, and behold, if the leprosy have covered all the his flesh, he shall pronounce him clean, and that plague. And he and that that he that had the plague it is all turned white he is clean so it says he is whole turned white so the so called white man is a is a clean leprous a, a clean leper all right meaning his his leprosy is all over his body all right what you call today vitiligo all right if a so called black man has leprosy it's what today is called vitiligo and that was like a fearful thing to have back in the ancient world all right. Uh, let me see something too. Le Leviticus 13 and 42. And if there be in the bald head or bald forehead a white reddish sore, it is a leprosy sprung upon the bald head or his bald forehead. So white reddish. All right. Pretty much no pigmentation. All right. Let me get the part two. So anything de derived of pigmentation. His leprosy, man. Yellow thin hair. Let's get that part because you have leprosy of the hair. Right? Leviticus 13 and 30 says, The priest shall see the plague, and behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow thin hair. That's what you call blonde hair today, which is extremely rare to have. It's a genetic defect. Then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. It is a dry scalp, even leprosy upon the head or beard. So if you have yellow thin hair, what's that? That's what you call vitiligo, man. These people that have it. And it doesn't just happen to so-called Negroes. You can see it on so-called Indian people. They look like what? They look like it makes them look like white people. So-called white people. Because you're not white, you're red and leprous. Let me uh get another one. Alright, just to prove that our people was dark skinned and our Lord was dark skinned. This is numbers 12 and 10. And the cloud departed from the tabernacles, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Haran looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. So, here's another one too. Second Kings chapter five verse twenty-seven: The leprosy therefore of, Nah of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence a leper, as white as snow. So we see in that. If if there was already so called white, then it wouldn't they wouldn't affect they wouldn't be affected. It, okay, I'm, you know that's like you know me if the Lord made me dark, I'd be okay. I'm just darker, but it stood out because they were a dark skinned um people, man, that was struck with what you call vitiligo today. All right, this is a genetic defect. Um, there's an account also to it with uh, Moses. Let me see. I think it's hand, flesh. This is um, Exodus chapter 4, verse 7. And he said, this is the Lord speaking to Moses, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. Now, hold on. Let me go read verse 6. And the Lord said, Furthermore, unto him, put the, now thine hand into thy bosom, and he put it, put it, his hand into his bosom, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. So it's telling you that, you know, we know that snow was white, and Moses did just that. He put his hand in his bosom, all right, and when he took it out, 
His hand was white. So that's a miracle right there. It was a miracle. If, it, if his whole body was white, then it wouldn't have been a miracle. Right? It would have just been like, oh, I look extra pale right now. That's what a white person would say. But it was a black man putting his hand in. He got vitiligo. Then the Lord said, and he said, put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put it in his his hand in his bosom again and plucked it out in his bosom. And then behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. See? So to have white leprous skin, all right, is a curse. So you're going to tell me that the second greatest power in heaven is going to come down here and be able to get sunburned? No, it doesn't make any sense, man. All right, he was a dark-skinned black man, an Israelite of the tribe of Judah. This is the book of Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of the Judah. Of which tribe that Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood, because the priesthood belonged to the Levites, but the Lord, as the scripture says, fulfilling Genesis the 49th chapter, the, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. He came out of the top tribe, the head tribe. Alright? And if you if you look at the planet Earth, the Israelites, because the Lord was a Hebrew Israelite, they dominate everything, especially the so-called black men. Alright? Football, basketball, types of sports, outside for acting, all types of singing. All right, we are the salt of the earth. All right, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. But I'm pinpointing you so-called Negroes because you are the tribe of Judah. All right, you're the head top tribe. And this is the this is the tribe that our Lord Himself came out of. I'm gonna go to Jeremiah 14 and 2. Now these are basic scriptures to a lot of brothers, you know that. Are familiar with this thing, but you could have people that's just listening, all right. So, this might be new to them. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, verse 2 Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are black. Now, the word there for black is Kodara, which means to be dark skinned. So, Judah, we just read that our Lord is from the tribe of Judah, it says the Judites are dark skinned people. It says they are black onto the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem is going up. And I got news for you all the tribes are really dark skinned, you know. Different shades of brown. Now there's been a confusion of face due to this mixing. But originally, Jacob, Moses, all these prophets that you know about, all these patriarchs of the Bible are dark-skinned black men. All right? Dark-skinned Latino men. Dark-skinned Native American men. All right? So as the title says, he was a black man named Yahweh Shai. And guess what? This black man named Yahweh Shai is going to return. Very shortly. That's another lesson for another time. With that, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rakakodash, and double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, which you well. Shalom.